Hi, welcome to our 2021 R Pod 179. We're gonna start right in the back corner here where we've got this little box here. So as you pop that open, you can see there's just a little notch in that bottom prong there. That's gonna line up with that notch on your hook cord here. And you're just gonna press it into place and a little eighth turn locks it in there. And then your cord will also have a little threaded collar there you can really lock it down with. At the end of your cord, you'll have that standard 30 amp end here. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter so you can take that 30 amp down to a 15 and plug into a standard household outlet just in case you wanted to charge your batteries or run your fridge. Beside that, we've got a cable and satellite inlet, so a coax cable to plug into there, firing up at your TV location. In this corner, as well as in each corner of the trailer, we've got these stabilizer jacks here. So what they'll do is they'll just come down, contact the ground, another turn or so just to firm them up, and they'll just get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you've got in the unit right now, just firming it up for you while you're camping. All right. So right here you can see we've got this one part of your sewer system here. So the sewer cap, you're just going to press in, turn it off, and you can see it's just got those two little ears there. That's how we'll be hooking up your sewer hose. It's just going to press into place, locks in, and there you go. So this tank back here, that gray valve is indicating we're at our gray tank. So that's just letting you know, you know, you're at your gray tank here. And your gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your showers. So typically that's going to be your cleanest water compared to your black, which is right up here, which is filled from your toilet, right? So when you're dumping your tanks, it's gonna be the same thing as in the back there, just popping this cap off, taking your hose, attaching it onto there, dumping out this black tank until it's done. And once that's done, we'll go and do that gray last just because typically cleaner water and just help keep things as clean as possible. Right beside the black valve here, you got your two low point drains. So you got hot and cold water here. So you're just gonna open up that valve and that'll just allow the water lines to drain themselves out. Straight up from there, we've just got your exhaust for your furnace. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just wanna make sure nothing's drooped over that. It does get hot. Right up top here, we've got your fresh water connection. So you're just gonna take your water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water, and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. Below that is your city water connection. So the same water hose will just plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. And then up in the front here, you've got your hot water tank. So just get this little keyway there. You're just gonna line that up, pop it open. You can see we've got controls down here in the bottom left corner. So that's your electric switch. You're just gonna turn that on. That'll turn on the hot water tank with electricity. Before you ever do so though, you just wanna hit this relief valve right there. Make sure that shot of water comes out. And that little bit of water coming out is just letting you know it is full. It's safe to fire it up. And you're not gonna burn anything out by doing so. Firing it up with propane, there's just a switch inside. And so once we get there and do turn it on, I will go over a reset procedure and the button that I'll refer to is just right here. So once we're done, we can close that back up, line up that keyway again, just lock it into place, and there you go. Straight down here, we've got your sewer hose holder. She so just got this little tab there, just line that up, open it up, and you can see we've got your sewer hose in here. So those are those same two ears that your caps had. Once this guy's fully extended, it is about 20 feet long, and we just got that nice little storage holder there. Just keep any sort of stench out of the trailer. Towards the front, you just got this little red box here, so that's your battery disconnect switch. You can see it's clearly labeled up is off, over to the side is on, so you can disconnect your batteries from your system with that. The battery itself is housed in this box here, so as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back or through your seven pin connection here, that battery is charging for you. Underneath this cap here, just push that knob back, open up the flap. You got your propane tank in here, so you just got that standard valve there, just turn it to open it up, and that's that. On the front, we've got your power tongue jack, so you just get a little light switch up top, and then below that, we got up and down. You just pull this little rear cap off, you can see it's just got a little manual override in there, so if your batteries were to die, you can just stick that in there and still run it up and down. On the side here, you open up this storage compartment, you can see we've just got basically everything for setting up your outside kitchen. Uh, currently, a unit came in with damage to the hanger of the bracket here, so that's currently removed. Um, will be installed at a later date. So I can't really set anything up here for you, but I can go over the gist of it, all right? First off, we've got your power cord in here. So you can see same notch down in the corner, as well as that threaded collar with the 30 amp end here. The cord itself is about 20, 25 feet long. Also provide you with a water hose and that park adapter I was telling you about. So your cord will go into there and then that plug into your standard outlet. Also in here, you've just got this little water hose with the little garden hose end. You're just going to take that quick neck end here, flip open your spray port, push that collar back, and you can press that hose into place. And it then pressurizes, and you get that run of water, all right? So we're removing it. You're just going to push it in and push that collar back, and you can pull it out, all right? 
you just want to make sure you stretch it out so that any sort of setting water in there is going to run out right that way you can store it dry right. so also in here we've got that manual override for your front tongue jack as well as a little jack for running all of your stabilizers So just a quick run over of how you'd be setting up your kitchen out here. So it's just got this little hanger bracket. You'll have another bracket that mounts up on the trailer there. It'll basically just slide into the top, fall down into place, and it just holds itself there on it, right? Give yourself a little cooking surface or whatever here. And the same idea with your stove. All right. So that'll slide up onto this bracket sliding onto the legs here, just lining up in the sides, right? And that'll be that. If you would like an actual vis visual of it, you can look up any other of our RPOD walkthroughs on YouTube here, and it should come up with it for you. So here with your propane hose, you just got that quick connect, so you're just gonna pull that collar back and you can undo it. If you have this valve here open, you're not gonna be able to undo that quick connect, so it's just an added safety, all right? So we can close that off, pull that quick connect back, and you can see we're just gonna press it right onto that valve right there. And then this end here has just got our own, its own quick connect, the exact same style as this guy here, just on the side of the trailer there. So you got a GFI protected outlet out here. So once you have your kitchen set up, if you're looking to make toast or coffee, you got the power to do so. All right back here, you got a black tank flush. So over time, you may notice you've gone, you've dumped your black tank, you know, for fact it is empty, but your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. You're just gonna take your water hose, stick it into there, open up that black valve with your sewer hose connected, turn on the water, and that'll just flush out that tank for you, getting rid of any sort of debris that might be causing your issue. Straight up here, you can see your two outside speakers. And in the back of the unit, we've just got your spare tire there. So now we can make our way inside. So your assist handle just up 90 degrees out and it falls into place. Just grab our door and open her up. Take the step and pull it straight up. Flip that other step over. And as we come on inside, straight in on your left is your fire extinguisher. Right behind that, you got two pet bowls there. You do have the pet edition trailer, so it does come with the pet bowls. A little bit of closet space storage here. Same thing below. So inside that little binder there as well, we've got all of your keys, all of your owner's manuals, any remotes, anything like that for the unit is just right in that binder there. And then straight down in the bottom, we've got your converter. So if you just press it top and center, it pops up open. Get all of your breakers on the left here. If a breaker ever breaks, it'll sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. And then on the right side, we've got all of your fuses. So just around the corner here, you get this little panel up on the wall. So the switch right on the right there, turns on all of your interior lights. Center right, we've got your porch light, so that does a little amber light outside that we'll go and see in a second. And right in the center, we've got your awning LED, so that does a light strip right below your awning. We'll go and see that in a second as well. And then on the very left side, we've got your awning switch. So we'll just press and hold extend, and that awning will make its way out. One thing to keep in mind is your awning may actually or can contact your door if you have it straight open, so you want to have it either closed or wide open, just so you're not hitting it. So once this guy's fully extended, it pretty much just stops in place. And there we go. So we're just gonna bring it back a little bit just to keep our fabric tight there. And then you're just gonna grab the foot here, just this little handle, slide that out. You can grab, grab this leg, swing it out. You're gonna swing it so that that handle here comes inside. And then you can extend the leg on out. And you just have this little foot here, you're gonna press up, bring the leg down into it, and then lock it into place. Right? Then you can just take the yawning arm here, push it out, and then this little flap right there, you just flip that out, locks it into place, and holds it there for you. Now you have the same arm on the other side there, so you'd be doing the exact same thing with that guy. And just changing the lengths of your arms right here is just going to change the pitch of your awning, allowing any sort of water or whatever to run off and keeping it clean. Right? Once we're done, we're just undoing these arms, letting them fall in, pulling the feet out, 
and we're putting them back into place. Here and it's let that flap comes up and then we can slide it in. Let's tuck it back into its home, push it into place and that's it locked in. So now we can press and hold retract and the awning will make its way back in. Now another thing to keep in mind with it, once it is set up, it is just a great big wind sock. So if you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you're going to want to bring this guy back in anyways, just so that you're not running the risk of bending your arms. All right, and there you go. So you can just get that view of that uh, porch light as well as your awning light out there as well. And then for your slide room, same idea as your awning, you're just going to press and hold out and that slide will make its way out. Once it's fully extended, it'll just kind of stop in place. And that's that. All right. So straight down below your light switches there, we've got your monitor panel. So in the bottom right corner, we've got your water pump. Hit that switch there, it turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh water tank to pressurize your lines. Beside that, we've got your water heater switch. Let's turn that switch on, that little red light there will come on, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence has started, that light will go out and it'll try lighting up three times. If after that third try it hasn't fired up, at that point you'll be going out using that reset button that we'd shown you. Well, stood right here you can hear the that igniter go and you can hear the whir of the flame we know that water tank's good all right and then we've got your monitor system up top here so press and hold battery it tells you your battery charge level so we're currently c for charging right now so because we're plugged in currently charging g would be good f is fair and l is low for your fresh tank as you fill that up it'll go to a third two thirds and full same idea for your black and your gray this light switch right here is for your bathroom so you have kind of the all-in-one bathroom here. So you do have the shower with hot and cold water, of course, a little pull tab to get your shower going. And right down below that is a diverter. So with that knob kind of up, I don't know if you can see it there, but with this knob here up, that's gonna use your shower with it down towards the back. That's gonna circle or cycle your water back around and dump it back into your fresh water tank. So if you are out dry camping and you can't get plugged into water, you're not wasting your water waiting for hot water, right? Okay? Then you got the sink there for it, and then right in the back here. Sorry. Right. Can I get this little like table stand thing? Move around up or down. It does have the two locations for it. And then of course the toilet with the little flush lever in the back right corner. Okay. Alright, thermostat here. So just press that bottom bar to wake it up. It'll start from off, then it'll come into fan speed. So your fan is just moving air. There's no cooling involved there. So you got low as well as high. After fan speed, it'll come into cool high. So this is where it'll leave that high fan on all the time. It'll cycle cooling in and out as needed. On cool low, it'll use the low fan all the time, cycling cooling in and out as needed. In auto, it's gonna cycle the fan and the cooling in and out as needed. So it'll become more of an on-demand type system. Same idea for your high, but it'll use the high fan. And with the air conditioner going, you're basically just left with two different lever louvers here. So you can close those off, kind of choose where you're shooting your air. Okay. Temp selection is just done with the arrows there. Okay. Hit that bar again after cool high auto and it'll come into heat. We'll turn off the air conditioner and turn on the furnace. The furnace itself is just kind of housed right down in here. Now, if you're ever curious whether or not it's actually fired up, if you look in the bottom left corner, you can just see the little blue glow of that flame once it is going. Now, the unit isn't ducted for heat or anything like that. So this guy, when it's dumping out its air, it is just kind of filling up this pocket. So if you wanted to get yourself a fan or something to put in here to kind of move the air throughout, that would definitely help. Otherwise, you are getting a real nice heated bed. All right, so you can hear that igniter go, and now you can just hear that whir of it going. You know that furnace is good. After heat, hit that bar again, it'll cycle back to off, and it'll just cycle back around. So right up here, we got your stereo. It's that power button in the top right corner there, turn it on. And then it'll go into our FM. So if you just press AM, FM, cycle through your different bands, you get your three FMs, your two AMs. Okay. 
volume is just with the knob there. If you press that knob, you can get into all of your settings there. Yeah. Seeks with the little the guys there. Zone one is your inside set of speakers. Zone two is your outside set. Play and pause, of course. Auxiliary, which would be connected to the back of the unit. And if you use HDMI or USB, it should just automatically pop up. USB, I believe, is just charging though. Bluetooth, if you wanted to connect to your phone. If you just press that power button, it just mutes it. So you have to press and hold and that'll turn it off. A little bit of closet space below, as well as a couple of drawers. So you can see here, we've got your toilet paper dispenser. We don't mount that because location is entirely personal preference. Okay, a little bit more storage. And then right down in the bottom here, we've got your inner back. So you just got that power switch right here. When it comes time to change the bag, you're just gonna pull that guy over, open it up, and there's your bag in there. And then right down below, if you just kind of sweep up all of the dirt in the floor, bring it right here and open it up. It sucks it all up for you. Into the bedding area, you do have the TV just up on the wall, so it just has this strap here. Just undo that travel strap, and we can swing it on out. And kind of just point it wherever we want, right? Right behind it up on the wall, this has got its 12 volt power outlet. Right beside that, we've got our antenna outlet down in the bottom, and on top is the cable and satellite outlet. That little red light there is just letting you know that that booster's turned on, so it's just got a little button beside it. You can turn it off and back on. Okay. Once we're done, I'm just kind of swinging it back in so that the TV sits kind of tucked into that corner by the valence. I'm swinging it back in and locking it back into place. All right. So the blinds throughout the trailer, all just like these guys here, just kind of sit where you leave them. Right. Smoke detector right above my head here. Right. GFR protected outlet down on the floor, so test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, that's a good thing to come and check first. For the dinette area here, your cushions just kind of mount down onto the little pods there. Right. Just got the Velcros on them. Then you can just undo the table with your travel strap here. Pull it on out, swing your table legs up. Plop it into place. And that's that. Once you're done and ready to set it up for bed, you're just gonna pull it out of place, bring these legs back in. And lay it on the ground. Sorry, lay it across the two. Uh... There we go. And then these cushions back here are going to come in, fill in the center. And there's your added bed. Right. Emergency exit, you're just going to be taking these two knobs here. Throw the window outside, hop on out. Storage across the top. And then for your fridge here, you just got that power button on the left there, turns it on. Typically you're gonna to wanna to leave it just on auto. Auto's first gonna look for AC power and then it'll run off of that. And if that's ever taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas, keeping cool as much as it can. If you're ever looking to have it run solely off of gas, just have this button on the right here come out and it'll run solely on the gas. And if you were to get that check light there, it's just letting you know it hasn't been able to fire up. At that point, just kind of turn it off and back on to reset it. And if it still doesn't fire up, just make sure you've still got propane. Okay, we can open her up here. Get the freezer section up top. Temp selection on the right there, so up is colder, down is warmer. USB charging as well as a power outlet. A little bit of storage here. More storage underneath your sink. Sink with hot and cold water, of course, with a plastic cover, so just make sure nothing hot's going on there. Then we got the stove, so just the glass cover there just flips up. Turn the knob over to light and hit it with a lighter, and you can see she fires right up. Now the first time you get out to your campsite and you go to use your propane system, it may take a minute just to get things to fire up. That's perfectly normal. It's just got to clear out of the propane lines. Turn it back off, close it back up. Right down below, we got your microwave. Pretty standard, just like home. And I do believe that's about it for this little guy. If you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.